Super excited to be joined by Gulfstream Park expert Brian Natto here to chat through the late pick five on Florida Derby Day. How are you today, Brian? I'm good, Sarah. Thanks for having me after uh, technologically changed a little bit, but uh, it's good to be with you here today. It's an exciting weekend. I mean, 14 races, Florida Derby, uh, big pools, and uh, lots to look forward to. Definitely. And don't worry about the technology challenges. I'm still learning about plenty of it, especially video production here at Horse Racing Nation. But super excited to have you on and uh, let's get started. Yeah. But in at uh, race 10, you know, it's a long day when the late pick five starts at race 10. But the Sir Shackleton Stakes, we're on seven furlongs on the dirt. What are your thoughts in this race? Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, we're going to watch the replay, I believe, a quick tempo in Fortin Hill. And I, I think that's kind of the defining race. And, you know, quick tempo got loose last time and he kind of sort of had to win that race. And, and he did to his credit. He ran fast. But, you know, I was pretty impressed with Fortin Hill coming out of it just because it was just weird to see his name in the entry box. Like, wow, this horse is still alive. And, and the fact that he ran so well said to me, like, you know, he's back in training after such a long layoff because they think he can do some good things. And I thought he ran well. He really had no chance with the flow of the race. But he's running on late. And I'm just hoping today, I don't I don't know if anybody's going to be able to like run with quick tempo, but I think they'll keep him honest. He's got to stretch out another furlong too. So I think it gets reversed a little bit. And I think Fort Hill's in a pretty good spot in here. So I'm going to kind of key off him. I know it starts the sequence, but... I'm as much on to him as I'm against some horses, horse like Collaborate. I don't know. You look at his races, all his good races are with Lasix, and he doesn't get Lasix today. So there were some horses in here that I was kind of going to fade a little bit. Yeah, I think Collaborate's going to take a significant amount of money, maybe not as much as Horton Hill and Quick Tempo, but I think a lot of people think that that's the third option, and I'm just not too sure about him. I know the blinkers do go on, but I'd like to see a better effort from him. I know that there's no speaker's corner in here, but – I, I'm just not too sure. I agree with you about Fort Hill kind of reversing things on quick tempo. Um, I'm a little excited to see Weyburn come back. Yeah. I spent a lot of time watching the New York circuit, and this was a horse that was on the Kentucky Derby Trail and then went to the sidelines, and maybe he's not fit and ready to go first off the layoff, but um, Brendan Walsh's numbers are 21% off 180-day-plus layoffs, and I think that he might be kind of like the wild card in here, maybe make things a little bit more interesting. Um, not exactly helped with the pace, though, of the race in here. Um, I would I would love to see a horse that was going to challenge quick tempo be the one yeah. that I like coming in off of, of a break, but I don't see that happening with him. Um, it'll be interesting if they leave quick tempo alone. I hope that they don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm glad you mentioned Wavering too, because I've never, honestly, never really liked him, never had much use for him, but I do think he's a little crafty, a little sneaky. You mentioned the wild card. That's a perfect way to say it because Brendan does such a good job. I don't think he's a two turn horse. So you look at his last race, the one turn, it was the Gotham and it was by far, you know, his best, best effort when he blew up the board. So I, I do think he's interesting. He probably needs that. You mentioned the pace probably isn't going to be ideal. I kind of worry if he gets run off his feet a little bit coming out of all those two turn races, but I'm going to have a little Wayburn somewhere in the mix, like at least as a saver for me, because I, I do think um, he's got some upside with the exception of Fort and Hill. We kind of know what all these horses can and can't do, and they've already showed it. So I, I'm interested in him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, moving along to race number 11 of the Sanibel Island Stakes for three-year-old Phillies. Now we're going a mile and a 16th on the turf. Um, this is where I'm looking for a little bit of a price. I know that some of the favorites are live and certainly logical and can win like Mischievous Kiss, but I'm looking to the number four sensitivity as a horse that won on debut going this distance so you know she can handle it and was gate to wire that day. So early speed on the turf is kind of at a premium and frequently horses get away at big prices just going gate to wire because nobody challenges them early and makes things easier for them up front. Um, maybe she gets a similar setup in here today if she's good enough to step up and face winners. Um, certainly a big ask to go into stakes company after the maiden win, but I think that she's a little bit interesting at 12 to one. And then 
Another bit of a long shot in here, um, number seven, Hail 2. This is a horse that was also running on the New York circuit last year and debuted against Pizza Bianca, who went on to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, then won at 20-1 to 1 next time out, breaking her maiden. And Miss Grillo after that kind of broke out at the start and veered into some others. Um, so I can kind of toss that race and then comes back in December, second at Tampa, maybe first start of the three-year-old year is a little bit more interesting in here. What do you think? Well, I kind of agree with everything you said in that um, the favorites are fine, but they don't have to win. And, you know, you just you want to be in front or be close to the lead turf course um, because horses struggle making up a lot of ground. Sensitivity's loose. I don't know how good she is. I mean, she's 30 to 1 to 1 last time. Um, it wasn't a great race, but she's loose in here. Paco's back, by the way, off his, as Ron said, his extended vacation. He gets to ride uh, Florida Derby Day. And so you know what you get with Paco. He's going to be aggressive, and, he's, and it puts other people in kind of a tricky spot. You know, do I go with him and run the risk of, of frying my horse, or do I lay back and never see him again? And say what you will, this horse was pretty good last time. So – um, I, the reason why I like my Philly twirl is because I, I don't know if sensitivity can see it all the way out on the lead. And if she can't, I think it puts my Philly twirl in a pretty good spot because she's going to be closest to her. Um, I would think, and she's been pretty good in both of her starts, uh, since, you know, breaking her maiden and then coming right back to beat winners, which is, is never an easy thing to do. And, um, I, the flow of this race, says to me i thought beach Knock trophy was awesome last time but you know, now we're in a stakes race i don't think it's going to fall apart like it did and so these horses that have made up ground in the past i, I think they're up against it a little bit um today so i'm, I'm gonna go with my philly twirl but this is a spread race for me as, as you kind of hinted at yourself um Hail two is definitely interesting off that New York form. I thought Chad Nation is is somewhat interesting as, as a comeback because she won on day two. Um, you know she won off work. So uh, and I always kind of think too. You know it just kind of goes with Wayburn as well. You know it's Florida Derby Day. A lot of people are watching. A lot of people want to win. I, sometimes I think just maybe these horses are a little tighter than they normally would be um, because of this. Now mischievous kiss is is pretty all right. Because Sure, you saw the Spenderella race. That horse is a freak. She was so, so good that day. And so I don't think Mischievous Kiss will be that far off or either. But to me, you know, she's probably going to be a pretty strong favorite. I printed out early of the morning line, but I'm sure she'll be a pretty stiff favorite, which is fine. She's the horse to beat, but I don't think she has to win. And I don't think her margin for error is is that much uh that that she can you know she has a, a huge advantage over these these fields so i think this is definitely one of the races at least for me um i'm trying to get a price in here because some of the other spots that we're going to talk about i'm not sure if they're in there or not right yeah i agree with you on the totality of the sequence there is a very short price single that i like you know two races which i'm sure you can figure yeah. out uh, or one rather um, so this is the one to kind of look for those long shots to build some value into your ticket because sure, like you said, the favorites, they can win, but they don't have to. So this is the one where I have a very short price single in uh, race number 12, the Gulfstream Park Oaks. I love Kathleen O. I do. Um, I know that her figures aren't quite as high as some of the other three-year-old fillies that we've seen this year, like Secret Oath um, and Echo Zulu, but Against this field, um, when I'm not such a huge fan, not totally sold on Goddess of Fire, um, I think that just the maturity that she showed last time out to wait and be given that green light to go and then just show the acceleration and pass everybody in the stretch. And this is a word that doesn't get out of the gate that well. Yeah. So now I think breaking from the outside, she's not going to run into too much trouble with doing that. Um, you're not going to be able to give up a length or two at the start going forward. But I think that in this field, I think that she'll be just fine and still be able to keep herself uh, undefeated. So, uh, Kat Katish is out, I believe. I think she's running up by your neck woods at Turfway. So she's oh, okay. Yep, yeah, I'm almost positive of that. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to play devil's advocate a little bit because Kathleen O is so good. And she's cool and Shug's done a great job and Javier's really done a good job with her too. 
Um, and this will come into play in the, the Derby, too, in a little bit. But this is a two-turn race now, as you know, obviously. And it's a short finish line, too. And you, you hit on something that I think is important. I picked Goddess of Fire. She's the only other horse that could possibly win. I mean, it, it's it's those two, and that's it. Um, so Goddess of Fire, and I bet her last time, so maybe I'm just a little bitter that she couldn't speak out. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's got the two-turn experience. And I think, especially at fairgrounds, I think that's going to come into play here because you said something that I totally agree with. Kathleen O has got this penchant for not really breaking with the field. And, and at some point it might catch up with her. And maybe she's just too good. And maybe today's not the day or in the Oaks. Um, but she's also got a running style that doesn't win races at the short finish line down here. So, um, you know, she's going to be the universal single. I'm just going to try to maybe be a little clever and pick out a fire. Um, and I don't know about the the flow of the race. There's no speed in here, really. Well, I, guess. I was going to say, if you tell me the main speed of this race is out, then maybe it's yeah. to look at it again and, you know, maybe change my mind depending on that. But that definitely changes things. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Blustery is going to go and she can't win, you know, she's, she's cheap speed, but um, I think it just from a tactical, you know, vantage point, it, it does put goddess of fire in a good spot in here. She's going to get first run uh, on Kathleen. Oh, I'll probably, I'll probably Dutch them and use them bold. I know that's not a, a great strategy. Maybe I'll have a little more of goddess of fire because I, I think, you know, as we're going through this sequence and, and just kind of picking up what you've been saying, we're, I don't think it's, you know, an $80 pick five that you can play. You know, you could play a $12, $16 ticket and maybe punch it three or four times or something like that. You know, um, so I'll probably have a little more Goddess of Fire than Kevin, you know, but um, I, I think if she's going to lose, this might be the spot. Um, I'm not, I don't think Goddess of Fire is better than her, but maybe the circumstances of today could, could turn the tables. Yeah, I think that if there's no speed in this race and it's the first time going the two turns and it's the short stretch and she yeah. doesn't break well, that's a lot against her and that's a lot to overcome. Maybe she's better, but I don't blame anyone for taking a shot. Just kind of like Echo Zulu last week. You know, if that was the time to beat her, that was the time and she did almost get beat. So it's fair enough. Um, but moving along to race number 13. Now we're doing the Kitten's Joy Appleton Stakes, a grade three mile on the turf for older. What do you think about this race? Um, I don't that have is that. question says how I feel about it too. <laughs> I, I don't to tell you I'm going to be guaranteed to, to hit this race because I, I don't know. There might be an all ball in my future. Um, I don't like anyone. So I, I they all kind of look the same on paper, don't they? They all kind of are a little hard to trust. I think Phantom Currency is clearly the best horse, but Sharp Mile, and he wants to go farther, and he hasn't been out in, uh, what is that, 14, 13, 14 months. So um, I, I think this is the other race in the sequence. We talked about the three-year-old Philly race. I think this is clearly the other race where um, you're allowed to maybe think outside the box. I thought Noble Indy ran huge last time. He beat Never Surprised or things. Um, I thought he'd been really good off the claim last time, and he's tactical, and he's drawn inside, and, you know, 10 years ago, he used to be a pretty good horse, too, so I don't know, maybe he's cycling back around. Um, order in law is, like, intriguing to me. I know he steps way up, but, I mean, let's be honest, it's not the best grade three Appleton we, we, we've ever run here, so um, I'd be willing to fade Phantom Currency a little bit just because of the layoff, because of the distance. I mean, gun to my head, I, I guess I'd go English B, but it's a bad post. I mean, terrible post to be out there going a mile. So um, I'm going to have a lot of coverage in here. I've never really liked Wolfie's Dynagos, but. Oh, me either. Thank you for mentioning him because it's like, what do you do with this horse? Because yeah. he's turned into like the synthetic expert and then wanted that huge price too back. And then they put him back on the dirt and he's a no show. And now he's back on the turf. And it's like, yeah, maybe the figures are better on the turf than the dirt, but only just a little bit. And then is he kind of just like 
randomly loose on the lead in here with Jose Ortiz aboard and then nobody else is good enough. And even Safe Conduct, who was running really well last year, then they did this crazy move last time out and they put him on the front end and just like wheeled off and then he totally backed up. So now I can't trust him either. And uh, yeah, nowhere to go in here. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, Wolfie Steiner goes to uh, Sadler's Joy's little brother, right? I think, and I, I feel like if he wasn't, nobody would even know who this was. <laughs> nobody would care. Win? Yeah, like why would he win? I don't know, but you gotta, you know, if you're spreading, you gotta use him because, as you said, he, he maybe he gets loose and and he forgets to stop. I don't know why, but he was really, really good. Too back. I mean, they, they went crazy early if if the fractions are right, and he. And he didn't stop. And so, um, I don't know. He was pretty bad last time. But it was actually, it was a good race up in Tampa. And it was on the dirt. So, you know, he's in the mix. I, I think, I don't know. I was going to say I could probably toss Scarlet Sky. But it's it's a chug. Yeah. And <laughs> 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 Sorry, you know, so, um, I'm pretty sure I, I'll have the winner. I, I don't know. I won't, I won't be able to pick the winner. But I'm pretty sure I'll have it. Um, and at least, like, on my main ticket my I, I don't know it's a tough race it's the type of race where i think the other cool thing too is like if you can get a five to one it's a type of race where the five might play like 10 or 12 in the sequence because there's just yeah. so many ways to go um but noble indy definitely at the top of top of my list i thought he ran really big last time um in a race where you know things just completely fell apart crazy that day and he's well drawn tactical so i guess the dart would probably land on him yeah fair enough um i don't know where to go at all in here it would probably be a major spread race i don't know that i'd end up hitting it all but yeah i don't blame anybody for taking a shot with anyone in that race but to the main event race number 14 on a long day the florida derby grade one mile and an eighth big one that everybody's been waiting for who do you like yeah, it's um, it's a tough race, isn't it? I don't I don't really love one. Um, I want to pick I want to pick a captain, but I don't know if I have the the uh, intestinal fortitude to do that. I'm going to use him though. I think he's interesting. I, I'll probably I'm going to pick Charge. It is who who I'm going to go with. I, I like his post. I like the fact he's outside some of the speed. Um, there's some not on some of these other horses i think we have to mention even before we really get into it that like this this is a real race you have to remember the holy bull and the fountain of youth are the short stretch two two turns but the short stretch short finish race and this is a real race and you're gonna have to earn it today and um I, you know white of Barrio, don't forget simplification was probably supposed to be loose in the holy bull he blows the start um, and White Abario just has a dream trip, and, and he won the way he could. Credit to him. Don't no, nothing uh, take nothing away from him. But you know we haven't seen him since. He missed a few days of training last week, and and all systems to be go. And you see the bullet there. So um, I don't know. I think it's a lot different set of circumstances for him uh, on Saturday going the true nine furlongs. Simplification, so cool. Probably the best thing that ever happened to him was blowing the break in the Holy Bull, because now they know, you know, we don't have to be on the lead. We can do whatever. And, you know, we all saw the fountain of youth and, and, and what happened, but he was good that day. And, and, and um, you know, horses typically don't win those kind of races, do what he did, coming from off of it, have any trouble and all that kind of stuff. But but he was good. But I think Charge It, you know, just looks like the Pletcher Gulfstream kind of horse. Um, just kind of might be able to grind you, throw 12s at you all day. You know, he's outside, you know, the, the speed. And I think it gets him first run. You don't want to be too far behind this, this dirt course, you know. You don't want to be on the far turn and wake up and be six lengths behind. I don't think that's going to work. Um so uh, he's my pick, but I'll just talk about O'Captain. I thought he ran really sneaky good in the Fountain Youth. He had no chance in that race with that kind of running style. And, and you know, just maybe, and Gustavo Delgado had a pretty good record in the Florida Derby of kind of outrunning the odds with horses and nothing else. He's going to be running on at the end. You could, you know, you know, you don't necessarily know that about all these things. going nine furlongs. Um, no use whatsoever for classic causeway. I think he's going to be favored. Um, 
I have no, no use for him whatsoever. Uh, I bet Peter Beer that he's going to be favored. I think he, he's a horse that takes money all the time. Die rag. Um, he's a two-time graded stakes winner, but he's a total, total play to me. I agree. I think that he's just too slow. He had everything totally his own way, um, you know, last time out. The race before that, yeah, a little, little bit of pressure, but not really. And that's lesser horses. Now he's facing horses that have been running really well, have running, have been running figures that are better than him, have been running at Gulfstream, which he hasn't been doing. I think that he's a great horse. I don't think he's as good as a lot of other people think that he is. I do think he's going to be favored, too. Um, funny that you mentioned your beer bets. Ed and I have a lot of head-to-head -head wagers on the fun things like that. And most of the time, I'm right. However, I feel like I'm going to be wrong about the Arkansas Derby coming up. Um, yeah, oh, Captain's really interesting. This is only his fourth career start. Um, I know Charge it, it's only his third. I, I'm a huge fan of his as well. Um, I think that the jockey change to Joel is a little bit telling. I think that that makes him even more interesting. He's 20 to one, you know, like uh, there's nothing wrong with this horse versus a uh, favorite that we're both willing to fade. Um, you already said everything that's great about charge it. I think that we've seen a couple of Fletchers this year that look like they're the goods and then they're not. Yeah, that's fair. I think this one is, um, and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but he's got an incredible pedigree. He was super game in his first effort with Volcanic pressing him the whole way. So, you know, he can take pace pressure and still stay around. And they were well clear of everybody else in that race. And I don't think a lot of others have had to deal with the kind of constant pressure the whole way around the racetrack that he has. Um, and then one other one that I'll just mention really quickly, Strike Hard from the rail uh, gets Junior Alvarado back aboard, who had some success with him, a first and a second with him. Um, he really improved once they put the blinkers on. He figured out how to switch leads in the stretch. Um, and he's not going to need to be up with the early horses fighting for the lead. He's going to sit probably a decent stocking or closing trip and another 20 to 1 that could be coming late and uh, might benefit from a little bit of added ground. So. I think that the favorites are all logical other than classic Causeway in here, like Simplification, Charge It, Way to Barrio, but looking for some prices underneath, maybe not to win, but Strike Hard, Oh Captain, um, even Cajun's Magic isn't that crazy. I wouldn't put him in the top three, but maybe the top four, you know, if some of the other favorites don't show up. So I think that this is a pretty interesting addition of the Florida Derby. Yeah, I mean, uh, Strike Hard's not bad. He, he's run well, and Cajun Magic is okay, too. I mean, Octane was, you can see him in the past performances. I know these are Florida-bred races, but Octane was really good back then, and he's fast, too. And, you know, he didn't run poorly in, in the Holy Bowl when he way up against it. So I, I, I kind of agree in, with O'Captain, too, and you mentioned Joel. I mean, you know, he can just drag horses home, so this horse will be closing late. I, I just feel like someone's going to be on the board in this race at like 30 to one or something like that. I'm not a huge try player or exactos, but I could see someone blowing it up. I'm glad you mentioned the pedigree for charger too, because he's out of that. will take charge family. That's just, uh, you know, just blue bloods. And he's bred to absolutely relish this, this, just it's take charge Indies in there too. Right. He won Florida. I think so. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's got a big pedigree and he's got a license to prove um i hope simplification runs I, I, he's such a cool horse and antonio sano who you know is a day in day out guy here running in his 6250s and the 12 fives it's so cool to see him have a legitimate derby horse he did so good with gunavera back in the day and it's just cool he's a really good guy and you know he runs his horses and it's cool to see him have a real horse and, and show him show everybody what he can do so i'll definitely be rooting for him but uh yeah charger will be some old captain. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure I'll be watching you on the uh, big screen on uh, Saturday today as well, right? Working today. Yeah, working today. So Keisha and I are going to do the uh, morning show at um, 12:05, and we got nine today, and then two Sunday too. I don't. I, it's out there. I'm not sure, uh, but we're going to pay the the rainbow on Sunday too. So it's mandatory day on Sunday. So it just kind of morphs into a huge weekend that's the end of the championship meet as well on sunday so uh starting next week we go four days so get a little reprieve i was gonna say after a crazy busy time it might be uh nice to just be able to relax for a second before you start the uh regular four days but um really appreciate having you on love your handicapping opinion um it's great to see 
great people, get the great opportunities to share what they know about horses and be able to kind of talk about things like ticket structure, A's, B's, Dutching, things like that, because I feel like that's not something we hear as much about. So great having you on and uh, good luck this weekend. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Thanks so much, Eric. This was fun.